Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In these tutorials we present the real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, signal processing, machine learning optimization, etc. In this video tutorial we provide an introduction to Python Control Systems Library. But before we start, let's have a word or two about this library. The Python Control Systems Library is a Python package that implements basic operations for analysis and design of feedback control systems. For example, by using this library, you can perform linear stability analysis of systems, you can linearize nonlinear systems, you can perform block diagram algebra, you can connect systems in serial, parallel configuration, and you can add feedback interconnections. You can compute the classical responses of the system, initial step impulse, you can perform body and Nyquist plot stability analysis, then you can even design optimal controllers such as LQR, H2A, and H infinity, and you can even do model reduction and estimator design. I have recently installed this library and here are my first impressions. First of all, this library has a very simple interface that resembles the interface of the MATLAB control systems toolbox. In fact, most of the commands for computing the step response, for for example computing initial state response, or for computing body or Nyquist plots are very similar to MATLAB commands. My first impression is that this library can be a good alternative to MATLAB's control systems toolbox. More importantly, this library is completely free. This is very important for people who don't have thousands of dollars to purchase the MATLAB license. In this video, you will learn how to define the transfer function that you can see over here. Then you will learn how to compute the basic system responses such as step response, a response to some arbitrary input, and the initial state response. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy, and planning to create this video. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start with installation. If you carefully read the installation instructions, you will see that the most important installation command is this command. And this pipe install command will install the library. If you want to have a few full functionality of this library, you also need to install this package slycot. However, you can still use this library without this package. If you want to have more advanced functionality, you will need to install this package. I was not able to install this package since there was some issue with compilers. I will maybe try to install this package in the future. However, let me just briefly describe how to install this library in Anaconda. If this is your Anaconda environment, you will click over here, then you will click on base root, you will open a terminal, and you will simply type this command. And on your computer you will see installation progress however since I have already installed this library I obtained these messages saying that everything is satisfied that is all the requirements are there after importing this library we can start demonstrating its capabilities the first step is of course to import the necessary libraries and packages I import the plotting function then I import the control systems library as CT and watch out over here, this is a standard convention recommended by the creators of this library for importing the control systems library. Then I import the NumPy as NP. Because in this video tutorial I plan to generate and plot several figures and graphs, I created this plotting function. This plotting function accepts several arguments. The first two arguments are arrays that jointly define a set of points that in turn define a curve in two-dimensional space. Then I have a title string. This is basically a string that defines a label of the graph. This string is the label that will be placed on the x-axis. This string is the label that will be placed on the y-axis. 
and this string is used to define the file name. Namely, I will save the graph in a specific file. Later on, you can add this report to your research article or your engineering report. The next step is to teach you how to define a transfer function. Those of you who are familiar with MATLAB can easily recognize this way of defining a transfer function. We define a transfer function by specifying the polynomials in the numerator and denominator. And then we call this function ct.tf. And just to remind you, we imported the control systems library as ct. However, some of you are probably not familiar with the MATLAB's control systems toolbox. And for you, I will briefly explain how we define a transfer function. Let us consider this example. w is equal to 2s plus 1 over 3s squared plus 2s plus 1. To define this transfer function in the control systems toolbox, we need to define two arrays. The first array will define the polynomial in the numerator, that is, this polynomial over here, and the second array will define the polynomial in the denominator. We simply take the coefficients multiplying the s terms and we put them over here. So the polynomial in the numerator will correspond to this array 2 comma 1. This coefficient multiplies s and this coefficient multiplies s to the power 0 and that's 1. On the other hand we can use the same procedure to define the array corresponding to polynomial in the denominator. And the array will have this form, 3, 2, 1. By using this convention, we can see that these two arrays correspond to this transfer function. W of S is equal to 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 4. So let us evaluate all commands starting from the code line 1 until the code line 28. And let's see the result. Voila! Here's our transfer function. You can simply print this transfer function by printing w. Here it is. Next, let's compute the step response of the system. For that purpose, I need to define a time vector. Here's our time vector. This vector contains a set of discretization points for computing the step response. We compute the step response by calling this function step response. We specify our transfer function and we specify the time vector. And let's see the result. There are no results. Hmm. This is because this function returns the simulation time and it returns the output. It returns the step response of the system. Let us plot this step response. For that purpose, I will call the previously defined plotting function. Here it is. I will specify the time, I will specify the output, and I will specify the title of the graph, labels on the x and y axis, and the file names for saving the graph. Notice over here that I'm saving the graph as the PNG file. However, you can also use the PDF file. So let's see the result. Here it is. Here is our step response of the system. Here, you have to keep in mind that this graph is saved in this currently active folder. So let's see this graph. Here's my folder and here's my graph. Voila! This is a beautiful graph that you can easily add to your scientific report. 
Next, let's learn how to generate the response of the system to a specific input. Here is the procedure. The first step is, of course, to define the time vector. In my case, it's a vector starting from 0, ending at 10, with 200 elements. In this particular video, I will explain how to compute the response of the system to sinusoidal control input. That's shifted above the x-axis for 1. However, you can easily modify this command to compute the response for an arbitrary input. Let's see the input. Here is the input. I generated this graph by calling the previously defined plotting function. You can see that this is a input, a sinusoidal input that's scaled for 1. And finally, let us compute the response of the system. For that purpose, we'll use this function forced response. We specify our transfer function, we specify the time vector, and we specify the input vector. Let's see the response. Here it is. Here is the output of the system. We can see that after the initial transient response, the output of the system roughly follows the input of the system. This is because there is some attenuation in our transfer function and you can see that over here. You can see that the gain of the system is 1 over 4. That is, the input with respect to the output will be 4 times attenuated. Next, let's learn how to generate and plot the system response to an arbitrary non-zero initial state. Again, the first step is to define the time vector. Then we define the initial state. It is 2 and minus 1. And after defining the time vector initial state, we can call this function initial response. We specify the transfer function we specify the time vector and we specify the initial state. Note over here that during this simulation the input is equal to zero. This is because we want to simulate the initial state response. Let's see the result. Here is the result. We can clearly see that after some settling time the system will settle to zero. This is because this system is asymptotically stable and any initial condition in the system will die out after a certain time interval. Okay, this will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.